Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name's Savannah. If you're new here, hey, welcome. On the channel, I talk about the fun side of minimalism and I recently conquered my biggest minimalism feat, which is downsizing our life, mine, my husband's and our little toddler from a two and a half bedroom house and getting things down to fit into just a 10 by 10 storage unit and our car. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my entire experience, things that I learned, mistakes I made along the way. In case you're interested in doing this yourself or just interested in taking a peek, a look inside someone's life who has majorly downsized. <laughs> Let's start with the why. What was the motivation behind this huge, massive life change? Reason number one is that my husband and I have always dreamed of leaving California and moving to the mountains, but our jobs had kept us in LA and then San Francisco. It just didn't feel like the right time until recently. And reason number two is because my husband just got a new job, which allows him to work remotely. And at this time, I'm not working. I'm with my son full time. He's only 20 months old. He's not in school. So it just felt like the timing was right, which brings me to the next reason, reason number three, and this is the financial situation. So we started looking at Airbnb houses and the price for the Airbnb was roughly the same cost as our rent and utilities in the Bay Area. So stay in a nicer house in a new city, yeah, it was an easy decision. And through Airbnb, living in short-term rentals, this would allow us to really explore these different cities and that is our end goal. It is to find a place we want to buy a home and raise our family. So instead of just picking up everything and moving straight to Montana, we decided we wanted to put our things in a storage unit, really just take what we could fit in the car, try out these cities over a six month period, and then make a decision from there. And maybe you're wondering, why did we sell everything if we're just going to move into a new house later this year? Won't that be expensive to replace everything. This one took a little bit of time to kind of do the calculations, do the math and figure out what felt good to us. So I started looking around everything in our home and frankly, the stuff we own just wasn't worth that much. I am a very, very thrifty lady. So everything in our home, I had got on a super deal. We do have a few nice pieces and those are the pieces that we kept, but all in all the costs of storing and transporting all of these things, it just didn't add up for me. Also another factor for me is that I had no idea if these things that I owned would work in our future home. Would it fit the aesthetic? Would it literally fit into the space? Would it be the right scale? Also, if we're gonna be buying our first home, I just know myself and I'm going to want something new or that feels new to me. Plus living in the Bay Area, I knew I had a huge audience, a huge market to sell all of these things to on Marketplace. Let's strike while the iron's hot. And my last reason for this downsize and probably the biggest reason, at least for me personally, is that I have always had this deep, deep desire to live with less and live more minimally. I have been diving down into this minimalism world, making it a priority in these past few years. And I think if we had this opportunity to move a few years ago, I would have been too afraid to separate myself from all of our stuff. But because I have been on this minimalism and decluttering journey, I have really strengthened these decluttering muscles and I have a lot more confidence in myself. I don't need a car and a certain make and model a year to make me feel accomplished and like an adult. I don't need to have this huge excessive wardrobe with designer labels to make me feel beautiful and worthy. So that's the goal. Be present, have fun, hit the road with my family and just enjoy life. Those are all my reasons why. Let's get into how, what was the big strategy. <music> Let me start with a timeline. So my husband accepted his new job in January. We felt like one month, two months, that was a little too quick to downsize our entire house, especially he's working full time. I'm with my toddler full time trying to do YouTube on the side. So we decided that three months would be the sweet spot. So I had two goals for downsizing. Number one was to sell as much as possible for as much money as possible. And then my second goal for all the remaining items that weren't going to sell, I wanted to find ways to responsibly get rid of them, AKA little to no trash and very few if no good will runs. So what I did first was I created three separate lists. The first list was our absolute essentials. So these were all the items we would bring in our car with us on the six month voyage. So it would be our clothing, our toiletries. And then the bulk of it was stuff for my son. If you don't have a kid, you're in luck because you'll have a lot more space for yourself. And then the next list I put together, this was everything we wanted to keep in the storage container. So this included our sentimental items and then all of our valuable items. We kept our leather sofa, our butcher block kitchen car, we kept our bed, we kept our mattress. And so I made a priority list for the storage container and then the items on the very, very bottom, those were on the chopping block if the container got filled at the very end. 
which it did. And then the last list, the third list, this was just everything else. Everything else I was going to sell. And I'm not gonna lie, before I got started, I was looking around my house at all of my stuff. And you guys, I feel like I'm a minimalist. I don't have as much stuff as the average person. I still felt very just intimidated by the whole process, but I kind of just looked myself in the mirror and I thought to myself, my mantra for this was that the only way out is through. Tackle it, girl, get on it, start listing things. So that's exactly what I did. Facebook Marketplace seemed to be the place where things were selling most quickly and for the most money. So that is where I decided to list everything. And I actually started with our top dollar items. I used that list of everything that I wanted to sell and I started with the most valuable things. So my car, that was at the very top and then some furniture pieces and then some electronics and then it just went down from there. And in my mind, if I got to the very end and there still was a few things left on the bottom of the list, it would be super nominal versus if I had just focused on random items, maybe I would be stressed in the end because I hadn't quite sold the car yet. <laughs> so that's how I worked through everything. And then I just started tuning everything up, cleaning things, wiping them down, taking true inventory of the condition of things. I think we tend to think items in our homes are more valuable or even in better condition than we thought. And when I took a close look at some things, I was like, dang, this is in bad shape. So I just started taking a bunch of photos and listing things, throwing them up, throwing them up throwing them up and then bam, 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 things were selling. I think I sold about one thing a day on average for the first month and a half. You guys, I even sold bed sheets, used bed sheets for $15. It's funny, you don't know what's gonna sell on Marketplace. Also, another layer to the selling is that we are still using most everything. Again, I'm a minimalist, so we use all of our stuff pretty much on a daily basis. So there were so many things that I couldn't quite sell yet until the very end. What I did, especially for the high dollar items, is that I just listed them really early at a high price, like more than I thought people would pay, but at least I had the listing up and if someone was interested and would pay more, which did happen for a couple things, I would just let the item go and just be without it. But who cares? You realize quickly that nothing matters in life. I'm just kidding. That nothing matters, you don't really need this stuff. So it was a nice lesson to learn as things started disappearing. Let me dive into some learning lessons from Facebook Marketplace because this is the primary tool that I used throughout this selling journey and I learned a lot along the way. If you don't know what you're doing on there, you can waste a lot of your time and feel super frustrated and that was my experience for the first week or so and then I realized I gotta take control of the situation stop dealing with all the weirdos set some boundaries and then I was good from there so I took a couple notes on the things I learned that I thought were the most helpful number one beware of scammers. I want to say 50 to 80% of the messages I got on my listings were scammers. And you will find that these scammers, what they're doing is they're trying to get your personal identification information. They're going to ask for your cell phone. Hey, can we text off the app? Also, what I started doing to avoid these scammers or get a closer look at people, if someone messaged me and seemed interested, I would actually go look at their profile. And if they didn't live in my area locally, no, I don't want to talk to you. You don't live here. You can't come pick this up. Number two, you're going to deal with a lot of looky looks lose a lot of people who are super flakes. So if someone seems slightly flaky at all, don't message with them. It is not worth your time. If a person's first message to you is that auto message, is this available? Don't reply to that. I mean, if you're super desperate, maybe you can reply, but I found that 99 out of 100 or nine out of 10, whatever of these people are not interested. They don't even reply. I highly recommend just going with the reply that is the most thoughtful and normal. Take a look at their profile. If they seem like a nice person, I know it's weird to judge someone on Facebook, but I find that your instincts are probably right. Right. If their picture is some mystery avatar and they don't have a cover photo, their location is elsewhere, I'm not gonna pick that person versus a nice person from down the street. That's a family in my neighborhood. I'm just going to go with the easier choice. You want it to be easy on you. Which brings me to learning lesson number three from Marketplace, which is set your boundaries. You are in charge of your time, of your listings. You don't need people harassing you, ghosting you. I was super kind at first with, you know, fluffy responses, answering everyone's questions. No, if someone asks me a lot of questions, to me, that's a red flag. I've got the photos. I did a detailed description. I did my due diligence. I'm not here to have a long drawn out conversation. If you wanna come over and see it, drive over now. So I usually write something like, cash only needs to be picked up today or tomorrow, needs two to three strong people. You need to bring them. I will not be helping carry this item. That's how I do it. I copy that message and I paste it back to the best three to five replies if you got a lot of replies and then just see who answers from there. I find that when I send that super direct message with everything laid out, majority of the time people flake out from there like, oh, I don't have someone or, oh, I'm working today or tomorrow. Sorry, man. I need this gone and I want my money. So be super direct and you will save yourself a lot of time and stress. 
So Marketplace is where you go to make the money. It's for those big ticket items. But what about everything else? For that, I would recommend a garage sale. I was a huge garage sailor growing up. We hit them all the time, but I have never hosted my own. In a garage sale, it's not going to be your huge money maker. That's really not the point. But if it sounds like a fun activity for you and you actually care about getting every dollar back and all the stuff in your house, it is, it's a great opportunity. So my husband and I, we had spent an entire weekend decluttering our basement in our garage and we just had so much junk and we decided spur of the moment on a Saturday that why not have a garage sale tomorrow? Let's do it. There's no rain on the forecast. It's February, but it's California. Hey, let's let's try it. So I listed our garage sale on garagesaler.com. I did a post on Craigslist with the photos of all of our, our best high ticket items and all the stuff we're gonna be selling. I did some old fashioned manual handwritten signs and posted those up around the neighborhood. And you guys, the garage sale was a hit. We sold probably three quarters of the stuff we put out. And the stuff that did really, really well, the garage sale was just household items, a lot of tools, yard tools, cleaning supplies. I myself put out clothes, shoes, and like home decor items, some of my art supplies. Nobody wanted those. <laughs> but if you have a lot of yard stuff and like dude stuff, frankly, those do really, really well. People love coming by and getting like a two gallon bucket or however many gallons of bucket is. They love a broom. They love some spare screws. Put them out there and sell them. People started showing up before the garage sale even started. I'll insert some of my favorite garage sale clips here. So I just pulled out this plastic drawer set, which is pretty far gone. We're selling it for a buck. And what was left inside except for literally Dustin's molar <laughs> or like wisdom tooth. Ew. <laughs> oh my goodness, I barely, I'm not even set up yet. And this old guy comes over and he like wants to buy everything, but he's like lowballing me and I'm not a salesperson. That's Dustin's part. And so I'm just like, get out here. He's taking me for this stuff. He's like, how about three bucks? How about five bucks? I'm like, ah. And he finds something under my bushes and like, is that for sale? I'm not cut out for that part of the garage selling, the negotiations. I'm just the designer. We have our second customer. I haven't even put up signs. So, so far Dustin's stuff is a hit. We're still on our second buyer and Dustin's like bringing stuff out of our house, Tim. <laughs> You guys, this, <laughs> these people are crazy. Someone else just came too. But the guy's like, you got clothes, you got clothes. Like Dustin has three shirts he picked out. And he's like, yeah, can you bring them out? Like, <laughs> we haven't even opened up. And I'm going to create more merchandise. This is just so stinking funny. Oh, I'm having so much fun already. I gotta get my clothes out. Whew. Let's see if he likes these. This Hawaiian shirt. We're already running out of merchandise, so I'm wheeling out our barbecue. <laughs> We're in here just lurking on the sales king. Whoop whoop, just made my first clothing sale. I sold a pair of leather booties to this really sweet older woman. She said, these are my casino shoes. And they did find me from the garagesailor.com post. So I'm happy I posted it. And Dustin and I pow out after the garage sale and we kind of talked about our biggest takeaways from it. And I would say the number one thing is that, you no, know, you're not gonna make a lot of money at the garage sale. People aren't really willing to spend on those high ticket items. But the garage sale, your bread and butter is going to be those $1, $2, $5, $10 items. And the more you can bundle those for the person, the better off you are. For me, I was trying to do all these price stickers on everything. And my husband, Dustin, the self-proclaimed garage sale king, he's like, no, don't price anything. I just, I do it in the moment, on the fly. I mean, he's a salesperson, so he's good at that sort of thing. And our grand total takeaway from our garage sale was 500 bucks. And we sold a lot of stuff. Like seeing that all disappear and only having $500 in hand was a little gnarly. We were pretty surprised we only made that much. But at the end of the day, we wouldn't have had that money otherwise. And more than anything, it just felt like a responsible way to get rid of these things that we would otherwise probably have donated. So garage sales for the win. And as for my clothes and shoes that did not sell at the garage sale, I listed all of those on my Poshmark store. And I had so many listings up in the store that hadn't sold for the last six months. So I just did a blowout clearance sale. And then I set a date on my calendar and anything that hadn't sold by that date, I was going to take to my local charity shop. I have a friend that runs this shop called Tags. Tags in San Leandro, shout out, check it out if you're in the Bay Area thrifting, it's a cute little shop. But yes, I took all my stuff to Tags and I was feeling a little bit bitter, I'm not going to lie. For me, clothes, that's a bit of my kryptonite. 
so when I'm not getting the money back on things that I've bought, it kind of irks me a little, I'm not gonna lie. But funny enough, when I took everything to tags and then went back to my house, I felt very liberated and free. It's funny, even being a minimalist, I always have to re-remind myself and re-remember that letting things go feels really, really good. And as for all of those remaining items, the things that didn't sell on Marketplace, didn't sell at the garage sale, it was time to donate those and get those things to friends. So at our going away party this Saturday before we left, I just showed everything we had to friends. I laid it out and our friends just took what they wanted. And then for the other items that were perfectly usable, but our friends did not want, that's where I turned to my local buy nothing group. If you're not part of your buy nothing community, I highly encourage you to go find your local group on Facebook. It's just the best place. If you're young, if you don't have a lot of money and or sustainability is really important to you in your life, this is a great place to acquire things and responsibly get rid of things. So I listed all of those items and there was quite a bit into this group and I listed them as gifts. So when you list something in your buy nothing group, you list the gift, the description, where you're located and how you're going to select someone to pick it up. And then people in your local community, they see the post, they inquire in a comment if they're interested and then you select them and communicate a pickup time. So it's this free exchange. And so nothing is going into the landfill. Things aren't getting thrown out. They're funding new homes in a very beautiful way. And I will say the cons of a buy nothing, everything I just kind of said, they are the pros. It takes more time than just throwing something out on the curb. And at the end of our move, you guys, I'm not going to lie. That's what I did with some things. I was stressed. I was tired. There was some straggler lurking items. You know how it is on the last day, the last few hours of a move. And so I threw those things out on the curb and I did a little Craigslist post. It's here. If the post is still up, it's still here. If it's not, it's gone. So I did resort to that, but I do like to give myself the time and space to get rid of things more responsibly if I can. And for the other items that were not usable, for instance, things that are super stained or broken that I couldn't sell or that the buy nothing group wouldn't want, I recycled those into a local bin. And then for all of our used towels and blankets that were in poor shape, I donated those to a local animal shelter. And I actually found out about all these amazing options for recycling things through this really good video that Shelby posted. I think her YouTube name is Shelby bizzle. I'll post that in the description box because it is a wealth of knowledge for how to get rid of old electronics, chemicals, just anything in your house in a responsible way. So you're not feeling guilty as hell <laughs> as you're moving out or downsizing your house. And it's funny, as everything disappeared out of our house, I thought it would feel really cold and sad and lonely. And I gotta say, it just didn't feel like that. I think there was just so much hope and optimism looking forward into our future. We had fun with the things that were left in the house. We jumped on remaining cushions. We made you know, new toys and games out of the things that remained. So it really wasn't a sad or weird time. All in all, it felt really, really good. And I am just so, so proud of me and my husband for going for it. I think in life you can have these lofty dreams and people talk about the dreams that they have. And I think actions speak louder than words. And we actually took the actions to do this. And it took a lot of time. It was draining, it was exhausting. I was listing things nonstop. And part of that is because I wanted to make a lot of money back. If you don't care as much about getting money back for your stuff, you could definitely just post things on Marketplace for free or really low cost and get them out probably in a week if you have a whole house of stuff. But for us, we wanted to get our money back. And let's, let's talk money. How much did we make selling 90% of our belongings. I calculated everything on Facebook from our garage sale and from my Poshmark and we made roughly $4,000. I think it was like $3,890 was the total. And most of that came from Marketplace. And you know what? I made a list of what we spent on all the items in our house and then I compared it to what we sold them for and we got 80% of our money back on everything. I think it's because I'm cheap as hell and so I just didn't spend that much on the stuff to start with. But man, a lot of that stuff was well, well loved and the fact that we got 80 cents back on the dollar for everything in our house just cracks me up. It's just very, very us. So there's a little inspiration to you. You can definitely get some money back for selling your stuff. So what happened to everything we ended up keeping? As I mentioned, we got a storage unit. We did extensive research while I did looking into the pods versus different storage units. And for us, the pods just didn't make sense. And that's what we wanted to do. We were super stoked on it. Yeah, let's fit it all in a pod. That's the boundary. We won't keep more than that. Then the pod's gonna be delivered to our front door. But it wasn't as easy as that. For instance, pods don't deliver to Montana. 
and Montana is up there on our list for places to move. So, okay, that wouldn't work. Also for the pods, there's only so many sizes. Pods brand has some bigger containers, but the competitors that are cheaper, they weren't big enough to fit our sofa. Our sofa is eight feet long. So there was some sizing and dimensions that didn't make sense. And then the costs, you guys. Pods are expensive. If you're a single person that can't deal with the lifting, you don't have friends and family to help, and you do have the money to spend, I understand why pods are much more convenient, but if you're on a budget and you don't mind doing the physical labor, I think a storage unit is a much better shake for what you're gonna get. So that's what we did. We got a 10 by 10 storage unit. It's not huge, it's not microscopic, but it, it worked for us. And we got one locally in the Bay Area by our house. It's about $100 a month. And even if we decide to stay in Airbnbs longer, let's say we do a full year, for example, it would be like between $1,200 and probably $1,600. And if you were to do pods, it's way, way, way more than that. So we're willing to pay for the storage unit. And then when we decide on a final location to call home, we will just fly back, load our stuff into a U-Haul and drive that U-Haul over. All in all, it's, it's much cheaper than getting the pods, at least in our circumstance. And you guys, we didn't think we were gonna fill up that storage unit, but boy, we did. I will say we were not the most strategic packers. We were just randomly putting things in there with no rhyme or reason. So if you are getting a storage unit for the first time, I highly recommend making a plan for it how you want the layout to be how you're gonna tetris it all in because for us it was just the most random order we did and so it's completely full i think if we had packed it better with a plan it would be like partially full with like a whole walking path around it but you know how it is you live and you learn so we'll do better next time if we ever have a storage unit again for this time it is what it is it worked for us and then it was down to what we could fit into our car we have a subaru outback and as I mentioned, we were bringing a ton of baby gear, the stroller, the car seat, et cetera. We had our clothes, we had toys, probably too many toys. I think I might do a little, little toy declutter before we hit the next stop. Also, I didn't pack the car that well. Well, the packing was good, but what was inside the boxes and our tubs and bins or totes on top of the car, I'll insert some footage here. Those were packed very inefficiently. It was the 11th hour of the move. We were exhausted. We needed to be out of the house and have it cleaned. It was just the state of the moment we were in. I don't think I could have done it any differently. So I'm looking forward to having those totes more organized and more thoroughly packed for our next drive to our next city. I am proud of us for not bringing too much gear. We are typically those people that like to have our gear when we go skiing. We like to have our boots and skis when we go camping. We like to have all of our own camping assets essentials and we still want to do those things we may ski this april over at big sky we may go camping this summer when we're in colorado so i'm challenging ourselves to continue living minimally and renting and borrowing where we can so that is why and how we did it that was a lot of information but i hope it was really helpful to hear my journey I like to think we're regular people, a regular family to a certain extent. We're not typically living out of a van or backpacking across Europe. So I hope this felt realistic and approachable in a way that, that you can relate to. And maybe you're curious to do this yourself. I'd love, love to hear from you guys in the comments. Are you a minimalist? Have you ever lived out of Airbnbs or any short-term rentals? Any tips, advice, just thoughts and opinions you guys have? comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome. I have a ton of decluttering content, all different stuff. I'm mostly interested in style and just like wardrobe with minimalism. So I have quite a bit of those videos as well, if that's your thing. And I actually built out a capsule wardrobe for this trip. We're going to be traveling during spring and summer. So I have a video I'll link in the description if you want to check out how I packed for this trip and how I decided what to bring. So stay tuned for more minimalism videos and to see what life is like living on the road out of Airbnb these it's not super glamping or rustic by any means you guys we are in a fully furnished house but this is something we've never done before and we're doing it as a family with our little ones so it's new for us and it's really really exciting we are loving montana so far and then we'll be going to colorado idaho maybe even oregon later this year so Stay tuned, and I just posted this Airbnb we're in, a tour of it, last Thursday, so check out that video if you wanna see the house we're staying in now and a glimpse of what it's like to live here in Bozeman. I love you guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll catch you in my video next week. Bye.